checked her in for Jason Whiteley this morning. Let's start with the new zero tolerance immigration policy. It was announced last month by the Department of Justice. Immigrant children are now being separated from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border, and immigration advocates are condemning the new practice, calling it cruel and inhumane. In studio is Democratic State Representative Ramon Romero from Fort Worth. And join, welcome, thank you for being here. And joining us uh, for the questioning, as always, is Bud Kennedy from the Star Telegram. Morning, David, the Ramon. Good to see you, Bud. I want to get thank it you, started by kind of um, framing this from the perspective of, I think some people would say, uh, we need to have tough policies at the border and protect our borders. And uh, separating families sends a strong message that you should, that when you come here, you're going to be dealt with, uh, you know, very firmly. Mm -hmm. how, how do you see that? I, I think that uh, Attorney General Sessions absolutely said that uh, yesterday uh, with his statements. Uh, he said that uh, you know this is the law. And if you come across the border uh, in his eyes illegally, we, there's going to be a price to pay for it. Uh, I think that uh, we have to look at this at a, at a, as a bigger picture, as a region, and understand that migration patterns have happened this way for a long time. People migrate for two main reasons, if they're hungry or if they fear for their life. And the folks that are coming to our border fear for their lives for one reason or another, and they're here to seek asylum. And I think that what's happening in the separation of families uh, is absolutely inhumane. And it's we've read so many stories this week about there being, it being torture uh, and what how do, torture is do, defined. What is inhumane about it, just to, just to state that? I think that what the general public needs to understand, what the American public needs to understand right now is, do we really know how these families are being separated? Do we know what an ICE officer is doing when he takes that baby from that mother? Is it forcible? Do we know? Is it humane? We don't know. But what we do know is that trauma affects people in a very severe way. And when families are separated for months on end, uh, no one knows their child like a mother. No one knows their child like a father does. And if that child has special needs, and at certain ages, we know that that can really affect a baby in a really rough way. We've heard situations where babies are crying so, so much that they're finally an ICE officer might say, okay, enough is enough here, let me go take you with your mother. What's happening? We don't know. When a U.S. Senator goes to a detention center and he says, someone is tell, tells him, you can't come in, what's being hidden? Ramon, what is the alternative? Uh, at one point, uh, a couple of years ago, when children were coming from Central America, mm -hmm. uh, the families arriving at the border, if you were from Mexico, you were giving a hearing date and released, yeah. but families, children from Central America were kept in, in uh, some sort of foster care. What's the alternative now? Well, I think that, um, you know, there's a lot been made about that these are Obama era uh, policies that Obama allowed this to happen. And I think that it, the, because of the fact that we don't always know if a child actually belongs to that parent, we have to do our due diligence to make sure that that's the case. But this policy that's gone about today, that's, that's, that's now a current policy of zero tolerance, there's absolute separation. So I think that policy needs to be rejected. And I think Speaker Ryan has said that he too, he too stands with that, the, against that policy. And we'll see what happens in Washington. So I think uh, legislators need to act and hopefully put it before President Trump and say, OK, we're, we're taking this a, a step too far. But what can happen, uh, I think, number one, don't separate the families. Uh, it costs the taxpayer a tremendous amount of money to separate them, to house them in separate facilities, rather than l determine whether or not this person is true in their statements and seeking asylum. And then think about the taxpayer as well and not stop at simply you committed an illegal act by coming across the border. Do you think Texas and Texans have a role to play here or this is just strictly a federal issue? Well, I think we're playing a role whether we like it or not. We are on the southwest border. Uh, health and Human Services, uh, our departments here are going to be asked to house these children in different places, and certainly the, the rest of the country is going to, going to come to our aid. This problem is not going to stop. And I think that that's something we have to realize. How many more jails do we have to build? How many tents are we going to build? How, where are we going to stop? Is it going to be when somebody dies in 100 degree weather in El Paso? Where are we going to stop? We're going to continue to build these. We're going to continue to fund through private prisons. People are not going to stop coming. We need to address the issue look for the most humane way to address this issue, and also those that, that, that we believe are dangerous, send them back. Are they going to be checked to see if they meet Texas standards for foster care in these facilities? Uh, the Texas Constitution says you know, education is for everyone. It's, you know, mm -hmm. All children have to be educated. Are, there going, are the school districts going to go in and teach these children? Well, I, I don't know that the school districts are going to go in and teach in uh, jail facilities. Uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't answer that question for you, but but that's a really good question that Texans and, and Americans should answer. There's going to be a really cost. There will be a huge cost associated with this with these new policies, uh, not just to I, I think about the cost to that officer. Mm -hmm. How many times 
do you go back into a room and cry after you've separated someone? That's human cost, that's trauma. Post-traumatic stress disorder, we're only beginning to understand how that affects humans and how that affects our surrounding other loved ones. Uh, so I think that, you know, we're, this is only the tip of the iceberg now. And I think the sooner that the American public gathers together and creates a big swell as, as it's been seen this week, it's going to be better for all of us as Americans. And you mentioned the biblical debate over whether you obey the authorities or, and you mentioned the Catholic bishops position. Well, the Catholic bishops the, the, uh, around the country have already stated that they stand against this new zero tolerance policy uh, of uh, Sessions and Trump has uh, uh, brought forward now. Uh, you know, the Sessions' use of Paul uh, in the Bible uh, to explain, and I think the, the quote was, to obey laws of the government because God has ordained them uh, for the purpose of order. Orderly and unlawful processes are good in themselves to protect the weak and, and lawful. He used a portion of the Bible. But if you continue to move forward, he also, that, that Paul would quote uh, the one and most important of, of all our commandments, and that's to love our neighbor as we would love, uh, love, love our Lord himself, uh, as we would love him. So are we being fair? Are we loving our neighbor at this point? Ramon, I know we have uh, limited time left. Talk yep. about the Democratic Convention this week. I hear you won't be there for a special reason, <laughs> but, but what is the important part about it? And tell us about yourself. Uh, well, first of all, I will be in Zacatecas, Zacatecas, being uh, uh, with my bride-to-be, Mary Lou Cabral. Uh, and it is absolutely on the exact same day the convention starts on Friday the 22nd, so a week from, uh, a week from uh, five days from now. Um, it's very important. People need to hear Beto O'Rourke. People need to hear our Democratic leaders. People need to hear people like Sylvester Turner again. They need to hear our message and understand that, that we, are, uh, we, we love first. And yes, we should care about electing other Democrats, but not over good policy. The state of Texas needs to move back towards good policy that affects our, our children, our families for the future. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so us. much. It's a pleasure talking to you and congratulations to you. Thank you, David. Appreciate Thank you. you.